guys. So today I'm going to show you how to set up a tank for an Australian freshwater turtle. My little Macquarie eye here have been growing up, getting bigger, and now they're much stronger swimmers. So it's time for an upgrade. Here it is. I'm going to show you exactly how we set it up. So the first and one of the most important steps is going to be our water quality. So we've got the tank, I've got the water in, and I've had the filter running for a few weeks now. That's to get the cycle going, get the beneficial bacteria started in there. So when the turtles go in, it's all perfect for them. Next, we're going to make some substrate for the tank. In this case, I'm going to use sand. Now we need to wash it, otherwise it's going to cloud up the tank with all the dirt and mud that comes with these bags of sand. But I like to go with the Wash Sydney sand from Bunnings because it usually doesn't take too long to actually rinse clean. So now we'll gently tip this out, trying to keep as much sand in as we can, but also getting rid of all this dirt and waste and stuff that's just going to cloud up the tank. Get all that out of there. You have to repeat this as many times as it takes until that water is clear. So once it starts getting to this sort of stage, that is pretty much there. You basically want to be able to stop and then within a few seconds or so, it all starts to clear up. I can see the sand in the bottom, so I might dump this out maybe once more and that should be good to go. Sand is an excellent substrate for freshwater turtles because if they do ingest some, they're probably not going to get any intestinal blockages, as well as it's very easy to clean and it looks nice. So when it comes to cleaning it, really, because it's so fine particled, everything usually sits on the top. And if something does manage to get in and underneath, all you have to do is stir up the sand a little bit, it'll float up in the water, come back down, sit on the surface, and you can just siphon it off from there. Another big benefit is the turtles can actually dig around in it and they really, really do. They like kicking sand onto their backs and hiding themselves as well as just generally digging around and having a good time with it. Now, along with the sand, I also usually like to add a couple of nice river stones. You have to ensure these are nice and smooth with not really any abrasive bits or anything the turtle can damage itself on because they can have quite sensitive skin and shells as well if they're repeatedly smacking into one of these. So really nice and smooth. You can put these around the place to make it look a little bit more interesting in there. So next we need some stuff for the turtles to actually climb on and also come out to bask on. So I've got this big log here that I've been soaking in the adult's pond for uh, quite a few weeks. So all the tannins are out of it and it's definitely waterlogged. So I'm going to try and put this in here and hopefully we can set it up in a way that it'll work well for the turtles. So I've decided to go with this setup easily allows the little turtles to climb out and bask on here. I'll put the basking light on top of that. And it gives them lots of different areas they can cruise around and look under the water and above. And the way I've just mounted this on here is I just drilled a little hole through the end of it here, put a bit of wire through it and just hung that over the edge so it stays there uh, nice and solid and the turtles won't move it. Of course you don't have to use a log like this, there's plenty of commercially made floating turtle docks and things you can get from pet shops and they work really well as well and they're really out of the way which is probably a bit nicer than this thing but I do often like to do a bit of a natural look in my enclosures. Now another important part of your turtle tank is going to be cow grit or crushed limestone. This is important for balancing your pH and also improving the hardness of the water which is important for your turtle's shell and general health. Now I'm using some cow grit that's already just come out of a tank, so it's not going to go cloudy, but generally if you take it straight out of the bag, put it in the tank, the tank's going to cloud up for at least a day or two. That's completely normal and uh, nothing to worry about. I'm just going to mix this in with the substrate. The turtles can eat it too and totally pass it. It actually breaks down in their system. It's a good hit of calcium for them. So there's no dangers at all with using this crushed limestone. Now, if you're not too familiar with how your tank runs, you should only add little bits of cow grit at a time and keep testing your water over about a week period. And if it's still a bit low on the pH scale, then add a bit more in. 
And if it's too high, then obviously you have to take some out. So it's a lot easier to put in than it is to take out. Now you don't have to put cow grit in the tank if you don't want to, if you don't like the look or anything else like that. What you can actually do is pop it inside your filter system and that way it is quite easy to measure out and uh, take or put in whatever you need to uh, match your water parameters. So it's up to you. I like having it in the tank, the turtles can munch on it if they want to as well. Now you don't want to overdo it with the rocks because they can actually trap waste under them. So if you have a lot in there, then there's going to be a lot of unmoved waste, which is going to make your water a little bit toxic. So lighting is of course very important for any pet turtle. Now they are an animal that comes out of the water and basks in the sun, and so we need to sort of replicate the sunlight here in captivity. Now what I have here is a T5 10% UVB. That's going to be spread right over a large area, especially over the basking site, so the turtles can come out and absorb that UVB radiation. And of course we need some heat as well. So this is just a little heat light, little dome I've just attached to the side here right over this basking spot to let them heat up and absorb that heat. So I'm also gonna add in a couple fish to the tank and these are gonna be a great indicator for if something's going wrong with the water or anything like that, the fish will start to show up with some problems first. Along with that, the turtles can also eat them, uh, but really most of the time these little guys are nowhere near fast enough to actually catch these. So another important thing for these little turtles is going to be aquatic plants. Now these serve two different purposes. The first is that it'll actually help clean the water. And the second is that the turtles can actually eat it themselves. With me having short neck turtles, a lot of their diet is actually aquatic plants. And so in here, I'm gonna be putting in some duckweed, a zolophon, as well as this elodia here. But I'm hoping to fill out this tank with a whole bunch of it. So throughout the day, they can just nibble on it as much as they like. Now the other benefit is of course, it actually you know, adds some greenery to the tank, makes it look a little bit nicer and a bit more natural and pretty. And with that, the tank is ready to go. Quick recap, we've got our heating and lighting, UVB, heat, and also some visible light over there. We have our basking area. We've got some sand and some rocks and things for them to cruise around and check out. We've got our plants. We, of course, have our water heater in the back there as well as our filter. We're using a canister filter and we have cycled water as well. All that's left is to pop the turtles in and watch them exploring their new home. So there you have it guys, a pretty simple Australian freshwater turtle setup that these little guys are going to love. Hope you guys learn a thing or two. If you'd like to see more videos like this or any on other Australian reptiles, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.